Hi, we're now going to look at Milton's Paradise Lost Book 4. Um, specifically in this short segment, we're going to look at Satan's soliloquy in Book 4, lines 5 through 113. Um, up at, this, at this point, um, Satan and his minions have decided that they are going to get back at God by attacking or trying to find out a little bit more about this prophesied new world and new creation that's being created. Um, so he's flying toward the new world and he's talking to himself and uh, in line five of book four he says woe to the inhabitants on earth uh, while the top I'm sorry he says woe to the inhabitants on earth um, and he's flying to them with the purpose and his purpose is this, and if you go down to about line 11, it says to wreak on innocent, frail man his loss of that first battle and his flight to hell. So what he wants to do is he wants to seek revenge on God for his loss uh, of that first battle, that playing field, uh, what was referred to in book one, for losing that playing field of heaven. Um, so he's going with this attitude, and starting in line 32, we find his soliloquy. Um, he says this, oh, that, and, and first off, he sees the sun um, as he's flying down to earth. He says, oh, thou that with surpassing glory crown lookst from thy sole dominion like the God of this new world, at whose sight all the stars hide their diminished heads. To thee I call, but with no friendly voice, and add thy name, O sun, to tell thee how I hate thy beams, to bring re to re my remembrance what state I fell, how glorious once above thy sphere. So he sees the sun, and the sun reminds him of heaven, and the glorious light of heaven, and he says, I hate that, because you, sun, remind me of the state I was in before. You remind me of how glorious it was. And he recognizes his own pride and ambition. Um, in another line down, he says, it was pride and ambition that took him down. Um, and he starts to discuss that it, it wasn't hard serving God. Um, go down another line, he says, he being God deserved no such return from me. You know, he, God did not deserve the ambition that swelled up in Satan's heart and caused Satan to try to uh, take dominion over God. And Satan also says a few lines down, he says his service wasn't hard. So it wasn't difficult to serve God. All he had to do was praise God and he recognized this. Um, and if you go down to about line 50 in book four, he says he disdained subjection and thought one step higher would set me highest. So Satan recognizes that he did not like being subject to God. He wanted to be higher than God. And it says, if you look in that section about line 50 through about 60, um, what we see here is we see that because Satan was over the angels, over the other angels, that pride grew in his heart. Um, and if you go down to about line 58, he says, Oh, had, this po had his powerful destiny ordained me some inferior angel, I had stood then happy. So he says, you know, if God didn't give me so much power, if I wasn't over the other angels, maybe if I was an inferior angel, I would be happier because I wouldn't feel the power. I wouldn't have a desire for the power. And he continues, though. He says, um, and no unbounded hope has raised ambition, but why not? Some other powers great might have aspired, and me, though mean, drawn to his part. So he says, okay, even if I were a lower angel, there may have been some other angel that would have desired power, that would have desired to be equal with God, and I may have been drawn to that. So he's recognizing his own psychology here. And he says, but wait a minute. And again, this is really cool because we get into the mind of Satan and we see his reasoning here. And Milton says this, um, Satan's voice. He says, Satan says, other powers as great fell not, but stand unshaken from within or from without to all temptations armed. He says, okay, wait a minute. I know I desired the ambition and you know, that, that's why I fell and I had ambition to raise up to that place of position. So maybe I should have been inferior. But even if I were an inferior angel, I would have aspired to join a legion that was rising against God. He says, but wait a minute. I really have no cause. Um, you know, not all angels rose against God. He says that some, uh, they withstood the temptations. So what is within me, he's beginning to understand, what is within 
himself was actually this desire and this ambition to be greater than God. And he says, but wait a minute, and we're going in now into the discussion, into one of the first discussions on free will. He said, hadst thou the same free will and power to stand? So he's asking himself, did I have the power to decide my destiny? Did I have the power to stand and not uh, take an ambitious leap and, and rise up against God? And he recognized it. He said, thou had. He says, I had that power. Whom hast thou then, or what to accuse, but heaven's free love dealt equally to all? So here he's saying, I can't blame God for my desire or my ambition. He says, you know, heaven's love is free. I didn't have to do what I did. I have no justification for what I did. So if you go down a few lines, he says this. He says, well, which way shall I fly? Uh, this is about line 73. Which way shall I fly? Infinite wrath and infinite despair. So he realizes that he's carrying now with him this massive anger toward God, and he's in despair because he knows of his failed attempt. He knows he's lost his place in heaven. And he says which, in line 75, which way I fly is hell. Myself am hell. So he recognizes he's flying to hell. Um, he's on this trajectory to a, a lower place still, and he recognizes that within his breast is hell, that, that these emotions, this conflict, uh, this rage, um, that it, so that is hell itself. And then um, if you continue on, this is about line 78, I'm sorry, 79, he says, oh, then at last relent. Is there no place left for repentance, none for pardon? And he begins this little um, discussion in his mind uh, for repentance. Is it possible for him to repent? And he says, well, the only way he can repent is by submitting to God. Um, and he says, well, but I would experience shame because I'm the one who caused all the other angels to rise up. And, you know, if I caused them to rise up and they fell, what would it look like if I repented? So his pride is keeping him in check, and his pride says, I can't repent. He says, so he has these torments. He says, this is about line 90, I'm sorry, line 87. He says, what torments I inwardly I groan while they adore me on the throne of hell. What With diadem and scepter high advanced, the lower still I fall, only supreme in misery. So he's saying, even though I reign in hell, even though I am the leader of all these um, fallen angels, he recognizes that he's in misery, that you know, even reigning in hell isn't that great. So what he, what he says essentially says um, in his continuation, he says, what would happen if Satan repented? Um, he says, what if I could repent? This is about line 93. What if I could repent and could obtain by act of grace my former state? So he says, what if I could go back? What if I could undo everything that had done? He says, would height recall high thoughts? How soon unsay what feigned submission swore? So he says, okay, so let's say I could go back and everything could be smooth again. He says, I would just be faking my submission to God. It would be feigned. He said, ease would recant vows made in pain. So here he's making these vows that he's going to repent. He's going to be true to God. But then once everything is smoothed over and everything's easy again, he says he would recant those vows. He would uh, take those vows back, if you will. He says there can never be true reconciliation because the wounds of deadly hate have pierced him so deep. So if you go down a few more lines, about line 109, 108, 109, he says, farewell hope, and with hope, farewell fear, farewell remorse. All good to me is lost. Evil be thou my good. By thee at least divided empire with heaven's king I hold by thee, and more than half perhaps will reign, as man ere long in this new world shall know. So Satan here is essentially relinquishing hope of attaining heaven and is going to be happy to split the kingdom of earth. Half of the earth can belong to God, half can belong to him. He's getting rid of hope. He recognizes at this point there is no hope. Everything that is good is not to be his anymore. And evil, he is going to start to call evil good. So as one would normally and naturally try to pursue the good things in life, he is going to pursue those things which are evil. So that is Satan's soliloquy as he is flying toward Eden. And we're going to pick up in, with the next video 
of Satan in Eden and overlooking and overhearing what's going on in the garden.